This is how my day has been going. We got him. We got another one. Oh my gosh, guys. Yeah, for sure. Whew. All right, everybody, welcome back. I know this is not my usual video, but uh, I wanted to make a tutorial for all the people who've been asking me. Um, how do you catch shad from shore? It's really not as difficult as other people make it out to be. So the shad run usually goes from about mid-March all the way until like two weeks into May. Um, it does vary based on where you're at. However, not all rivers have these shad, so definitely um, make sure that they are in your river system before you go and fish for them, because you do not want to be wasting your time out there fishing for a fish that is not there. All right, so some areas to target are generally going to be where the river gets a little thinner um, compared to your main river. So like tributaries, um, places where there's dams and stuff for the fish to stack up at, um, that's an awesome place to find some fish. Most of the fish coming through there have to be funneled through that small channel and uh, that's going to give you your best chance at catching them. Rip rap, rocks, semi-heavy current, sometimes the fish will hang like right outside the current. They're usually pretty well known. There's not really any secret shad spots most of the time when the shad run is going on a lot of people are going to be there in the location that you're going to be targeting so just keep that in mind all right so lures people overthink this one way 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 too much some of my favorites as i mentioned in the beginning are spinners small and light spinners um, small spoons uh, these could be cast masters uh, crocodile spoons really anything anything that's going to be like the small size so i'll show you what i consider small this is what i consider small right here i think this is a 112th Size 112, I can't really remember, honestly. You can't really go wrong with silver or gold. Typically, when it's a sunny day and it's really nice out, I like to go with the silver. However, on the cloudier days, I like to go with the gold. It really doesn't matter that much. I'll show you guys, or I'll tell you guys the point that really does matter the most in a few seconds here. But, I mean, if you want to get fancy, you can. You can switch it up. Uh, a few different colors here. Here's a gold one. And then I also have this little rainbow trout colored one for the most part spoons will outfish spinners at least in my section of river i usually like to have that on the very bottom and then i usually bring it up to my jig which i'm about to show you guys in a second here so for the rig i usually have a small flashing thing on the bottom whether it be a spinner cast master that i just showed you guys and then usually up on the line you typically have your shad darts or your curly tail grubs so for me i personally use uh, curly tail grubs i couldn't find any shad darts and the right color, but it's just a little white, white grub there. Other people also like to do double rigs um, with these, so they'll just have like a small weight on the bottom or no weight, and then they'll have one of these tied on and then another one tied on, and it's just two jigs. But I like to spread up the diversity, uh, have that spoon on the bottom, and then have the jig up there, so the spoon can kind of get the attention of the shad swimming by, and then if they choose to bite the jig, they can. If they don't want to bite the jig, they can bite the spoon, so they have options. All right, let's talk about Okay, focus, there we go. Let's talk about working these lures. It's really, like I said, guys, people people just, <laughs> people try way too hard um, to work their shad lures. Let them work for you. For the most part, you're not gonna need any fancy action. They're not bass, they're not walleye, they're not your standard game fish that's gonna react to a bunch of crazy twists and walking the dog and all that BS. The goal is to get it in front of their face. So with that being said, you need to be able to find where the fish are at. This is the most important step. Out of, out of all the steps, if you want to skip all the other steps, at least watch this one. For the most part, in the morning time, the shad are going to be higher. For the most part, in the daytime, when the sun comes out, they're going to be a little bit lower. I've personally seen this so many times on the bank. Um, I'll be catching fish nonstop. Everybody else isn't catching anything because they fail to adapt. They don't want to stop working their lure one foot uh, under the water column. They don't want to switch anything up. That's why you're not catching fish. Usually when I first start out, I, I work my way down. So I start from the top and just get to the bottom. So you try one or two seconds down, you're not getting anything. You try four to six seconds down. Four to six seconds down, you're not getting anything. You try eight to ten. Eight to ten seconds down. And when I say seconds down, again, that is from your lure hitting the water, you wait eight seconds before you start reeling, letting out line to make sure that your lure gets to that depth and then you keep it there as long as you can. Slow cranking, slow cranking, let it work for you. So once it gets to that depth, 
you start catching fish. Let's say you get bit at eight feet down. All right, so now you know the fish are at eight feet. Most of the time, if you catch a fish at that depth, they're gonna stay there for at least a little bit. For at least 20 to 30 minutes, they are still going to be in that same spot. So keep repeating, keep repeating. Hit the same spot every single time. Let it get down to that depth and start cranking. Let's say you're getting short bites. Let's say you're getting short bites. This would really be the only instance that I could see you um, wanting to change colors. Okay, focus, come on, geez. Colors, if you're getting a lot of short bites, meaning you're reeling in, you're in the strike zone, and you're just getting taps, and you're not hooking up, say that happens like two to three times, after the third time, I would definitely switch up the color, whether it be uh, more vibrant or less bright, vibrant, it really doesn't matter too much. Just sometimes, just the change in that color, um, will get you to, to hook more fish. Like I said, you need to find them before you start switching up colors and stuff like that. When you're at the right depth and you get it in front of their face, you're gonna get bit no matter what color you have. Uh, whether you're hooking up or not is gonna show you um, whether or not you need to switch colors. But yes, guys, pretty much rinse and repeat that strategy uh, for your whole day of fishing. So like I said, morning time, for the most part, the fish are gonna be a little bit higher. Um, try two seconds down, try four seconds down, try six seconds down, eight seconds down, until you find the fish. Once you find the fish, keep hitting them in that same spot. If they move, start the process all over again. Start from the top, work your way down, and if, you, if you're fairly certain they're still um, a little bit deeper in the water column, you can just wait a little longer. Wait 12 seconds instead of eight seconds. Wait 10 seconds instead of eight seconds. It really is just <clears throat> Some people have their own preferred strategies. Use that if you would like. But for me, for the most part, I like to slow reel, um, just dead sticking the bait, try to keep in the strike zone as long as possible. Or every, one, every now and then I'll add in a pop. So I'll just pop the rod once. Very, very subtly, like I said. And sometimes that's enough to get them to bite. But you do not need to go whipping your stuff through the water. No doing this. You don't need to do anything fancy. It's, I, I promise, you do not need to do anything fancy. Keep it in front of them as long as you can. Other than that, guys, thank you for watching. I know this isn't my usual video, but I kind of wanted to switch the content up just a little bit. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Um, but I hope you guys learned something. Hope you go out there and catch some shad. But uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.